Thief's fingers chopped off in Islamic punishment in Iran. In Iran, convicted robber, 28-year-old Morteza Jalali, had four fingers amputated by a guillotine-type device installed in Tehran's Evin prison, despite calls for leniency from surgeons and human rights groups. Mohammed Hussein Durudi, the chief prosecutor of Iran's uh, Khorsan Razavi province, stated, quote, the judiciary does not show any mercy to those who break the norms of society and disrupt the public order. The Quran justifies this ruling as it states in um, Al-Mahida, chapter 5, verse 38, quote, as for the thief, the male and the female amputate their hands in recompense for what they committed as deterrent or punishment from Allah. The head of the Iranian Association of Surgeons, Iraj Fazal, called on the judiciary to not amputate, calling it worrying and horrifying. Morteza is the most recent victim after reports from Amnesty International confirmed the amputation of the fingers of prisoners Puya Torabi on July 27th and Sayyad Barat Husseini on May 31st. Amnesty said that Sayyad Barat lost consciousness due to pain and blood loss and suffered an infection. He has been held in isolation since. So, go ahead. Just to be clear, this is not the picture of the thing there of the person this is the only picture we have of iranians carrying out finger cutting so it's been used every time every time we have another person's fingers cut to demonstrate what the process looks like they go back to this picture because this is apparently the only time somebody took a picture they, this is the device that they use and they put their hand here and they cut your hand right and these are the people so just to see what the process looks like we use the the people use this old picture that uh, the, the only picture they have, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to cover this news so that people understand that this is something that still happens, that amputation for criminal punishment is something that still happens and is sanctioned on the state level. This isn't just something that Islamists groups go do in acts of radical vigilantism against other innocent civilians right in some sort of terroristic community policing like this is the the official state processes for these kinds of crimes and what's extremely concerning is under iran's new president president raisi not only have we seen a huge uptick in executions but we have seen a huge uptick in amputations and there's been documents that have been leaked within the past few months that show that internal government agencies are asking the judiciary or the penal system to go through and stop delaying executions and amputations. They're like, we need to follow through on these faster. I don't understand. I mean, I get the executions. Their prison population is like too high and they don't have the capacity. So that made sense in their, like, from their point of perspective. Like, like I mean, I, I kind of get why they were doing that, right? Like, the execution is going up, but what is like, because guys, I never think that, I, I usually don't think that this is ideology alone, right? People who the, the atheist activists, that think like religion is alone explains these things. A lot of times it doesn't. A lot of times it's religion plus something politically convenient. Okay. So that's why the executions kind of make sense to me because why they were not picked there. I think they were trying to save money and make room. But I don't get this. Why would they? Why is there an uptick in the amputation? Like, this is like an. You would think that right now Iran, with with the people being so anti-Islamic, many people Iranians be so anti-Islamic and being so anti the regime, saying that this is barbaric, saying this is worse than the Dark Ages. They say that these the Iranian people, right? and there being so much tension between the people and the government, you would think that this is not a time to do this. So I don't understand why would they pick up the amputations? What do you think? I think to impose a heightened state of terror over the populace. Yes. You're so, yes. You, oh my God, Susie, why are you so smart? 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like I was, I was like, you, you got it. You're right. <laughs> like, because it's actually the other, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's because of that, because they're scared of the people, because there's more protests, they're like trying to show the people that they're, they, their teeth are sharp. Like, don't forget, this is why Khamenei said that we're going to bring back, back the God of the 80s, right? Uh, because people like know your place. Like, we will, for those who like, don't we, know, that references mass executions. Tens yes. of thousands of people executed, being brought in and killed without trial by the truck load. Not an exaggeration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but that's the kind of suggestion that people think that he was saying when he, he said Khamenei said because Iran went through a, a period of time um, in the eighties that it was brutal, like it was genocide level brutal right and those are the 80s and how many just recently given that people are complaining more about the government and there's more opposition and stuff like that that's picking up how many came and he said he, uh, the god that we have today is the same god that was that we had during the 80s right so people have been trying to interpret what that means because what he means is that we the, we are the same people with the same values. Like our when, when he says we our God is the same, that means that our religion is the same. That means our values. Like we didn't do anything wrong back then. So if, he basically was saying indirectly Perfect. that if we we have to go back there, we will go back there. So it was a warning to the people. And I think, like, you're right. This is this uppick is kind of like a warning to the people that m know your place. Like, we will get brutal if we have to. It's I mean, so yeah. bad. That's very good. I, um, one a point that D brings up that is extremely important is that D is saying this was done in the prison's health clinic. So this is done supposedly in the medical setting. This is done Hi. in Avene Prison's infirmary. In the mm. presence of doctors. How did he but get infected the then? Exactly. Okay, so according to... So what I'm about to read is um, about one of the guys who recently had his fingers amputated, not the guy that had this most recent amputation that the main story is about. But this is about a similar one that happened fairly recently. So... Um, an incident in Naveen prison in late spring of 2022 gave a clear picture into the mindset of Iran's judicial officials on corporal punishment. On May 31st, as reported by Amnesty, a pr prisoner named Syed Barat Husseini had four fingers cut off in Naveen prison. There were multiple officers present. They included the Tehran prosecutor, the head of Avin prison, the prisoner, the prison's assistant prosecutor, the judge in charge of the sentence implementation there, and the chief doctor at the prison clinic. Despite the latter standing by, Barat Husseini was given no anesthetic. However, beforehand, the officers approached Barat Husseini to let him know that as an option, he could pay to get the fingers frozen and then have them physically reattached on the completion of his sentence. Unsurprisingly, Barat Husseini did not have the money for this. So this is an impoverished man who resorted to theft as a means of subsistence. He got caught, was given this sentence. They said, if you pay us, we will freeze your fingers, chop them off, and then surgically reattach them. This man could not afford to do that, obviously. What? And so they chopped off his fingers without anesthetic, and he fainted, lost consciousness because of blood loss, and then was transferred to a hospital. Then he got a severe infection, and then he's been brought back to the prison where he's been held in isolation, solitary confinement, so that people don't know what his condition is. This is too much. This is beyond evil. Are these it's people so crazy? And a lot of what people talk about is how a disproportionate amount of people who are faced with executions, but particularly faced with amputations, are people from economically disadvantaged ethnic minorities. So there's there is a racial component of this as well, essentially. Well, there would be a racial component even if they weren't trying, because the 
racial, like different ethnicities in Iran have different economic statuses on average. Exactly. And people who can pay for good lawyers are not going to, like no rich person is ever going to go through. Oh, actually, actually, the biggest thieves in Iran are extremely rich, right? So like you have CEOs of companies, political, um, very highly influential people getting caught for stealing um, big sums of money, big, big sums of money, okay? They never lose their fingers, okay? You have to like steal, I don't know, like a, a sheep or like a, like a car uh, or something like small, then you lose your finger, okay? But if you're one of this big guy and you're stealing like millions of dollars worth of money, then you might go to jail, but your fingers don't get cut. I don't know how that works. Like wouldn't the punishment for people who steal more wouldn't that be more? But like a lot of people are rich enough for them not to even see the inside of a court ever or jail. Um, but again, like ethnicity plays a role in here because, you know, if you're a Baluchi, you're probably a lot less on average. You're like have less income than somebody like that is a farce or something, right? Mm -hmm. Or a torque or a cord or lower mm -hmm. income. Um, but um, another thing I want to mention that how barbaric this whole Islamic, the the logic behind the islamic ruling is to cut someone's hand because they're stealing because think about the modern world you when somebody steals it's probably most likely because the system has failed them it right? depends more most likely like people like countries where people are taken care of the theft is not that common right <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I lived for in San Francisco for the past nine years. I beg to differ, but I have my own wait, bitterness about that. I will let you continue. Wait, that doesn't disprove my point. You, you're talking about United States, so you, we are talking about a place where people are not taken care of. Okay, I'm talking about I'm talking about relatively to I don't know Scandinavian countries, where you know, like you're like um, you're acting like United States is like somebody no, that okay. people are not less. Yeah, I, okay. I, I mean, I, this, I, I would sidetrack everything with this conversation, but San okay, Francisco yeah. has an extreme amount of resources available to its citizens and has actively taken away any methods for the state to penalize these kinds of actions. Yeah, but that's like... We've insane. taken away was... all the sticks. We only have carrots. And so we have a huge problem of no rule of law now. <laughs> Yeah, San Francisco is different when you take away the sticks. That's like an outlier. Yeah. Okay. Usually, usually, <laughs> okay. Taking away San Francisco's weird example of not actually enforcing the law. Okay. Most places, you, at least in Iran, how about that? In Iran, people see the theft as a failure of the system. These are mm -hmm. people who would have most likely would not have been stealing if the government was this, in, in, you know, bad at management or like letting people down right so the, all the economic failures so and the way that the modern world okay tries to not including the us okay tries to when they when somebody steals they go through a system that tries to put them into a workforce like try to give them the skills and the know-how like they, they don't just put them in prison just to punish them they also want to fi figure out how this man could go back to the society contribute to the society benefit from the society have a proper job right because they see like okay if this man fail uh, steal we failed him okay we failed him now let's fix let's see what we could do so that he could go back and make money in the, the proper way right um but imagine another system that not only doesn't try to fix the situation with this man you take the means of production from his body you know what i mean you take the, the only ability that he had to not steal i mean islam's like oh i cut his hand he can't steal anymore okay but he can't work anymore either you didn't fix any like you had an up you got him you had an opportunity to find a way for him to now go work not only you didn't help him with that you made sure that he can't. What is yeah. he going to do without fingers? Like he can't enter. Like he, he was out of the system. He was out of society. He was an outcast. And now you guaranteed that he's going to remain an outcast. It's insane. Um, I do want to highlight some other uh, comments here. 
No, you already highlighted that one. Um, so somebody saying, are, uh, start any other comments that you think is worth um, highlighting. Um, Kian is saying, are there, are, are this amputation, is this amputation done in public, uh, like the hangings? No, again, this picture is not, uh, this is the only picture that we have of an amputation, and that's why this is one, this is the one that is used all the time. This is not the picture of this story. This is the only one amputation that has been done in Iran, right? Um, this is not done in public. Even the hangings are usually not done in public. Hangings that are done in public are unique ones that are supposed to scare, like it's like usually a, a rapist or something like that, right? Um, usually hangings are not done in public. It was special cases are done publicly. But you're gone? You want to well, in this era, now it is. Um, yeah, for restoring me saying that machine doesn't look like a medical device at all. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. It almost looks like a lathe or something. It's, well, this is not so again, this terrifying. is not the picture of the, um, yeah. Yeah, they described the one that was used on these prisoners as somehow like a guillotine. And D is saying deforming people is no way of rehabilitating. Exactly. 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 I still can't get over the fact that this was done in a supposed medical setting and the man, man they managed to let the guy, they managed to let him uh, lose consciousness from bleeding and get infected. Like what kind of a medical center is this? How did you not? I can't believe how, this was done without anesthetic. Yeah, why wouldn't they do it without anesthetic? Like there's to nothing make as the barbaric as possible, as inhuman as possible. This is literally like, it's, did they ask for payment? It's literally Thanks. medieval. Literally medieval. I read a really good piece from IranWire.com called Corporal Punishment in Iran, a state frozen in time. And it talks about the how other states have moved on past methods of punitive justice that are meant to be dehumanizing, degrading, disabling, except for abnormal states like Iran. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, did they ask for payments for anesthetics as well? About Not to my knowledge, but it's so perverse that they're like, hey, if you pay us, we'll freeze your fingers and then put them back on. Like, we're like, we're thinking like, this is a time to make- Is this make an extortion this. racket? I want to I want to meet the guy who looked at the situation like can we make money out of this? <laughs> oh oh and like how is it? And how do you not see how the punishment is like the punishment is less if you have more money? Okay, sure. That's a fair system. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.